The following program is rated TV 14. It contains inappropriate language and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. On this edition of The Real Deal, a nature photographer in pursuit of a rare bird soon realizes she is the one being pursued. Then, a man is terrorized by the Easter Bunny. And finally, the good, the bad, and the undead. All that and much more on The Real Deal. You have three minutes. Go. Three minutes and 16 seconds. I'm sorry. You have three minutes. Hello and welcome to The Real Deal. I'm your host, Joe Vecchio. In this program, we will showcase student filmmakers from around San Diego and explore what it takes to work in the film industry. In this edition, we feature more fantastic films from graduate and undergraduate students of the San Diego State University's School of Theater, Television, and Film. Joining us once again to provide insight on what the students went through to create these films is SDSU professor and filmmaker, Greg Durbin. Welcome to the show, Greg. Thank you. Greg's experience ranges from independent film and video production to video art and includes documentary and short form narrative work. He has worked professionally as a director, writer, cinematographer, editor, and storyboard artist. He has a Master of Fine Arts degree from UCSD in visual arts and film, and this is his 27th year of teaching at SDSU. 
So, Greg, the theme for the show tonight is horror and suspense, but uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about how these films actually get made. Well, the pitch is really everything. Mm -hmm. Students have to generate an idea and make it compelling. Uh, this, this came about a few years back, maybe about six years now, when uh, Wally Schlaughter, who is also an alum mm -hmm. uh, and was one of the uh, first uh, San Diego film commissioners, certainly the most successful one, mm -hmm. He's also a festival organizer and theater organizer. But uh, he proposed the idea of a pitch competition that would be rewarded with real money out of his pocket. And, and uh, it's significant enough cash that the students uh, really uh, put more into their pitches, put more thought, mm -hmm. raise the bar considerably. Uh, and especially if you track back six years, you see these pitches are getting really impressive. Which is why he gets thanked in a lot of the credits of these He's films. Think, yeah. And as do you and, and Yeah, the other and it's expanded. Andy Friedenberg, also of the Cinema Society of San Diego, has uh, contributed with his own version of a pitch competition. Mm -hmm. uh, so the students understand there's a lot at stake. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they develop the project sometimes months, months or even more in advance, and then present this in about a 12-minute format. So in a typical semester, how many films get pitched and how many get chosen? Students in a, t in a class of 25, you might get uh, typically 13 pitches. And of those 13 pitches, uh, probably five to six will be successful. So, so those are the ones that go into production. Mm -hmm. Now you have several classes doing roughly the same thing. So in any given semester, you'll have um, a whole 30 films go into production. But it's a great collaborative effort though, right? I mean, uh, obviously. Yeah, they're all collaborative. Yeah. This is not a conservatory school. Uh, we're trying to develop versatile filmmakers, filmmakers who have enough knowledge of the uh, various craft areas that they can speak with conversancy with each other, with respectful conversancy mm -hmm. with each other. They may not be experts, but they know a little bit about everything and a lot about one thing. And I don't, can't speak for all the departments uh, in, in, the, in the school, but uh, when the students work together on these projects, they really develop uh, good re working relationships uh, where you may not get that in a lot of other majors. Is that correct? It's correct. They understand that we, we try to impose a sort of real world model, but uh, if you don't get along with someone, it's not an option to act out. Mm -hmm. uh, you get fired in the world mm -hmm. if that happens. So you have to find a way to adapt and make yeah. it work. And they're, they're generally pretty darn good at that. Our next film is Shudder, produced in 2013 and written and directed by Richard Goff. In it, a nature photographer camps in the wilderness in pursuit of a rare bird, though she soon realizes she is the one being pursued. It's followed by a 2001 film titled Killing Time. It was written and directed by Tyler Spangler and shows us what can go wrong, will go wrong. Let's watch.
Good luck getting that, Yogi. <sighs> Keep talking. Trouble critters, come on, scat! Ha <laughs> 
Frank will park in the back. He's too cheap to use the valet. He'll be drunk. I'll stage a fight. When he's on his way, I'll signal you. We won't get another chance at this. If anything goes wrong, he'll kill us both.
doing out here? I wanted to smoke a cigarette. Thought you left, Frank. Changed my mind. I'm not leaving without you. Tired. You're drunk. And I'm not getting in the car with you. Hey, don't push me, bitch. I'm not in the mood. Let me go. That hurts. Good. Now shut up. You're coming with me. Sweetheart, please. Jog your memory. The young man, the one you've been fucking for the past six months. You're insane. And you're so sloppy. Did you think I could possibly allow you to get away with this? You need help, Frank. There is something seriously wrong with you. Nothing I can't fix. I have no idea where this is coming from. And I'm through listening to your paranoid fantasies. You're a lunatic. You want it to be true. Some sick part of you gets off on it. I can't take this anymore. I'm leaving. Goodbye, Frank. Feet away and I hit you in the neck. I must be getting old. Help me, please. No one can help you, sweetheart. We're all alone. No one will ever know the truth. I love you. <laughs> really, Rachel? It's a little late for that. Now stay still. Because with my aim, we could be here all night. That's a good girl.
and there'll be nothing left of him. We can finally be together. Forever. Okay, Greg Shutter, uh, really uh, suspenseful film. Um, what can you tell us about that production? Well, it was a, a first level graduate production. Uh, Richard Goff did this as I think his first project in the uh, program. He was working with suspense, obviously, and um, I, I guess I'd want to make the distinction between surprise and, and suspense. Uh, he creates the suspense simply by planting the idea that there's, there's a presence in, in the, uh, outside the tent at night. And uh, <laughs> it's that old classic thing of uh, Hitchcock uh, describing it. Uh, yeah. You two people sit down at a table, and one of them has a briefcase. If we know there's a bomb in the briefcase, and the two sitting down, one of the two doesn't know that, there's suspense. If instead they sit down with a briefcase and it blows off, that's just surprise. Mm. But the, the, the tension comes about from knowing it could blow off, the mm -hmm. audience knowing that, and the other person knowing that. Well, there was tension through that entire piece as far as I'm concerned. If you have paranoia, you probably shouldn't be watching it. So. Yeah, a lot of this comes, of course, from uh, <laughs> subtle formal devices. I mean, just how do you move a camera, a, a slow push in on a face at the mm -hmm. right time. Mm -hmm. Timing is so important in creating that. The rhythm of the editing is so important. The use of point of view, camera is so important. And then using the uh, the image, you know, the, the camera to the shutter, obviously, uh, to, yeah. to expose this threat right. to her, this person. Yeah. It doesn't matter if the logic is a little bit amiss. I yeah. mean, we, we often don't question that, do we? Yeah. Um, and then Killing Time, another great film, great acting. Uh, yeah. Killing great Time, uh, no pun intended, is, is constructed like a Swiss clock. It's, uh, it is a film about time, using real time. Uh, I, I happen to know that uh, Ron Nager was the producer, by the way. Tyler mm -hmm. Spangler was the uh, director-writer. They worked together, but they built the whole thing first as a video, video storyboard, and then they used 35 millimeter film to basically parallel everything they had shot hmm. with better lighting. So that was shot on film? It was shot on 35 millimeter and film. And there isn't much film left anymore these days, is there? Uh, no, but film? up until recently there was a lot of 35 millimeter film work. We still have some mm -hmm. uh, going on. Uh, no, with the, we have uh, 4K digital cameras and there's just not a good enough reason to justify the cost of 35 uh, yeah. production. And the anymore. makeup, I mean, the blood and gore, I mean, it's <laughs> Pretty realistic. Uh, that's a whole specialty unto itself, isn't it? Can be. It can also be, depending on the film, uh, unconvincing. Mm -hmm. Mixing just the right color blood is a trick. Yeah. And students are online all the time trying to get the perfect recipes for yeah. that. After a short break, we have three more films to show you in our evening of horror. Okay, we are back. I'm your host, Joe Vecchio, and joining me is SDSU film professor Greg Durbin. Next up are two off-center horror films. Easter Sunday was produced in 2012 and written and directed by Laura Gill. In it, a man is terrorized by the Easter Bunny after hearing a scary story when he was a kid. The second film is called 1881 Zombies. It's a zombie western produced in 20, 2008. It was written and directed by Dusty Duprell, and it tells the story of the good, the bad, and the undead. Enjoy. And then, in the dead of night, he slowly creeps into your house. But, but he can't if the doors are locked right? Why? Are you scared? 
If you can't handle it, you can always go run inside to mom. No! I was just wondering! Fine. Then shut up and let me finish my story. Where was I? Oh, yeah. And once he's inside the house, that's when you're really in trouble. That's when he comes into your room. Be careful, though, because if you open your eyes and catch him... Gotcha! <laughs> Did we get him, Jack? <laughs> you bet. No, that was stupid. <laughs> I'm telling Mom. Go on like a little baby, Aiden. Oh. <laughs> we got him so good. <laughs> So we meet again. Everybody loves tricks. Oh, <laughs> 
Please take the gift. I got you. <laughs> oh, I got you. I got you, Mr. Easter Bunny. I have such big plans for you. You are gonna oh. taste so delicious. <laughs> this is the best Easter ever. <laughs> See you in the morning. <laughs> Give me any of that crap, you lunatic. Give me back my Xavier. What have you done with him? Mrs. Cochran, you need to calm down. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Don't give me that shit. I saw him over the fence. You can't go back there! I can. Mrs. Cochran. Mrs. Cochran. Hey, you can't come back here. This Looking isn't your... Looking for my baby. Oh. You know where oh. Get my poor baby out of there! Oh, you don't understand. This poor... Fuck! He's been terrorizing me for years! Oh, this sick obsession with Boy. Xavier is getting ridiculous! Come here, Xavier. Come on. No, 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 no. My life's working. Don't mess with it! No, wait, 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 wait. Let me have him. Let me have him. Please, please. please. That's you my money. I waited 20 years for this. Whiskey. Ten men went out, and only the drifter came back. Seen enough blood for one day, Cody. In the morning, this man will hang, and you will have retribution for your fathers brothers, and sons. They've been calling for you. 
Call him just me. Your boy's right there with me, Cody. Coming for everyone. Well, I can handle what's left of them by myself tonight. Whatever you did to our boys out there, you crossed the line. There ain't much I can do for you other than to tell you that if you're here when I get back, I'll be forced to hang you. And that should save my skin this time, Cody. Even so. these outside his cage. There are two keys to this jail. I have one. The sheriff had the other. Turn around. A hanging's too merciful a punishment for you. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil! What happened out there? No one should have come back. When this mess is done, we'll settle our debt. Here you go, sister. The power of Christ can move you. The power of Christ. It's been compelled to get inside.
you get for stealing my hat. It's gonna get a whole lot worse before it gets better. All right, Greg, two great campy horror films. Maybe you can go into a little bit about set design and art direction because obviously that Western, uh, can you tell us where that was filmed and how that was made? Well, I'll talk in general about uh, our, our approach to uh, location scouting and studio work. We, we uh, kind of pride our, ourselves on the fact that we have uh, a dedicated production design area. And uh, so a lot of the sets you see in both of these films uh, were built in our studio and uh, a lot of attention is paid to uh, stressing the surfaces of the wood and the colors and, and, and of course the lighting as well, which is a cinematographic concern. Um, there's also a lot of uh, uh, emphasis on location work. Uh, we have people scouting locations all over the desert. Out the eight, there's a small town where I believe uh, uh, the zombie film was shot. Hmm. But they, they, they do a lot of their own work. They bring in a lot of props. They have to modify a lot to uh, accommodate the script. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it, it's uh, something that you don't normally see in a non-conservatory school, it's such a, an emphasis on production design. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, under the supervision of uh, David Morong, who's, who's really a pro at this. And so it's really clever should be the theater department and the film department to make a lot of these productions. Is that what uh, Yeah, theater at? and film have an increasingly merging design program. So a lot of the theater designers know they're going to get work in film. And, 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 and the film people uh, draw from uh, the ranks of the actors in theater mm -hmm. uh, for their, for their uh, casts. Well, that's great you collaborate because, uh, you know, stage actors and film actors, uh, it may, uh, it's not always the same animal, is it? I mean, you, to get those skills, right. you have to, you have to you do both, right? right? And no, the, the program's becoming increasingly symbiotic. We're getting a lot from the theater folks, and they're getting a lot from us. Mm -hmm. Costume design is another area where we're going to see more and more of that mm -hmm. um, cross-pollinization. Mm -hmm. So all these roles, uh, when, when these credits roll, I mean, there's a lot of careers options out there for uh, a lot of your graduates, uh, not just acting and, and producing and writing. There's a, there's a whole series of things. Uh, I'm always amazed by the, the number of people in, in any one film. Yeah, that, uh, I think partly this uh, is attributable to the fact that the students come from working class backgrounds. They recognize that uh, they're not all going to become directors mm -hmm. and that there's a really uh, creatively gratifying future in so many of these craft areas. Mm -hmm. uh, so we see people going into increasingly into post-production work. Now. And even in commercial and industrial work, right? I know some of your graduate students are going into you know, commercial oh, sure, work. And sure, they start their own production companies um, or they, they move into the industry, work in the camera department. Some of them do, of course, uh, go as far as they can. Like Destin Cretton is mm -hmm. a good example. Uh, mm -hmm writer-director. Justin Halpern, another writer-director. Not to mention Kathleen Kennedy who came out of your program. But anyway, Greg, we really want to thank you for giving us your time, your education, your expertise, experience, and you're doing great work. Uh, 27 years there, and I'm sure there's more great work ahead. So thank you for being with us. Thank you. Our final film tonight is Undead Love, produced in 2011. It was written and directed by Alejandro Mia Sherrill, 
Drew Clapp and Greg Nikolaev. In this film, a zombie boy walks the earth in sorrow for killing his girlfriend, but she soon returns. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on The Real Deal. These are not my hands. My hands are soft, yet firm. They're not capable of this. I have no control. My love, what have I done? My heart drove me to perform this terrible act. I am eternally sorry as I walk this earth in everlasting damnation. Life is so fragile, just as the birds in the trees and the flowers in the ground. I feel this no more. So beautiful and so lively. Your eyes, they were always so bright. You never had a care in the world. You were just happy to be alive. I've always loved your hand in mine. My love, is it truly you? Have you returned to me from beyond? Thank <laughs> you.